hello and thank you again for coming back with me but today now we can see mr buster here buster's my personal dog buster i shipped over from the states when i moved over here to australia um he was my first little dog i ever had and you know he didn't always have these tear stains now mind you i only washed him last week this happens in a week he gets washed every single week because well, he travels with me and he sleeps with me. I'm not sleeping with the dirty dog. Not happening, is it? So, um, you know, he he tears ever since he's landed here in Australia. It's only gotten worse. Um, we've had tear ducts flushed, trying to see if that wasn't it. We've had different antibiotics for it. We he even had a growth on one of his eyes, um, which. Oddly enough, it's not the one that tears up and, and waters and gets all goopy. It's the other one. Um, so we've had we've done we've done a lot with his eyes, and you know I tried for a very long time to try to fix it myself. There's no fixing it. There's no miracle creams. There's no miracle powder, food. I mean, I've tried just about everything. Okay, staining happens more or less when it's a pH balance um, out of whack. So just because they're tearing does not mean it's gonna stain, okay? For instance, Adam, my standard poodle, you guys have all seen him, um, he doesn't stain, okay? He, he tears up when he eats, that's the main part of when they tear up is when they eat, and he, I've never had staining ever problem with him, ever. But, and he's on the exact same diet as Buster here, but every dog is slightly different. When it comes to um, trying to get rid of the staining, there isn't anything you can do other than clean and wipe their eyes every single day. Buster here tears so bad that even over the night, by the time next morning, it, his eyes are so crusted that he won't let me. It hurts. Okay, so I have to soften it. And so I even wash his face a couple times throughout the week before I actually do the bath. And even then, it's a fight. He's my own personal dog. It makes me look like a really bad groomer, huh? Um, but groomer's dogs are always the last ones to get washed or groomed anyways. Um, but no. So I'm coming to show you, you know, we have clients, dogs that come in like this. Now I'm not saying, you can always suggest these things to your client to see if they won't do them at home because I pick every single one of my dogs. I boogers every single day, if not two or three times a day. When I'm home and just sitting and chilling, they come and sit in my lap. I'm constantly cleaning their eyes, um, except for Buster here because he's he's the most extreme one, and as you can see, he's real touchy with his eyes. Um, and so I need to be really cautious and gentle. And just like your other clients' dogs, they're going to be real touchy when it comes to doing their eyes because number one, they're not used to having someone do it all the time. Um, but I've got my ways of, of doing this and I would like to show you guys how I, I clean Buster's eyes because taking, um, I mean, if you guys can see that taking a pair of clippers and just going through and shaving them or trying to brush that out right now while it's dry, that, that skin is like wet tissue paper. It is soft. It is going to tear. It's going to rip. It's going to scratch. And then you're going to get these, then they're going to get scabs then you can get an eye infection or the scabs may not get infected, but you got now scabs and open sores. They are going to scratch and rub their face 10 times worse than you ever would. And then that can cause more problems down the road. So these are all things you want to avoid. And don't get me wrong, they do happen. Even I have done it to my own personal dog, but I know why and I understand that, you know, I, it was a mistake. Everybody makes them. The thing is you learn from them and uh, Buster here's taught me a whole lot when it comes to dealing with dogs like this. So um, I'm going to at least get him washed and ready for me to actually start doing this. I don't need to show you guys how to wash a dog, okay? But don't try to do this right off the bat. You want to at least wash the dog and get a good portion of the dog washed before you do like say your last shampooing because you, you want to soften all of that. So when you're washing and getting wet, don't scrub it, don't touch it, don't worry about it. Just let it um, let it soften because that's going to be the key of what this next step is. So, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. So I will... Don't mind him 
chicken. That is just him not liking the process. Now, my secret to cleaning these eyes is good old Johnson and Johnson baby shampoo. Um, it really truly does not burn the eyes. What it does is it actually kind of feels funny, more or less, because I have put it in my own eyes, um, or I've washed my hair and let it run into my eyes to see what it feels like. So as you can see, I have a cup of water. Just gonna squirt a little bit in there. And I mean, doesn't really matter how much, it's just a little bit. And I have a toothbrush. Now this toothbrush is only used on Buster. Um, if you're gonna be doing this to a lot of different clients, I suggest you have their own toothbrushes. Um, and as you can see, I just kind of apply this to the eye. And you can sit there and scrub. And like I said, when you do get in the eye, it does not burn. It's just you clearly can tell you feel like you have something in your eye. Um, it's just not, and it easily washes away. So what I'm doing to Buster is not something that, that I, I would have no fear of what I'm doing to him. Because why? I've done it to my own self. Um, now, if you guys can only see, but that's pretty yucky. I got, I'm getting that stuff off of there. A lot of times, like him, he gets this right across the, the top part of his eye. Do be careful that you don't push too deep and get these bristles like through the eyelids. Um, just for the fact that you can still scratch the eye. I mean, it, it, it's a necessary evil that you got to do, but this really cleans it gently, and it's much more safer for the dogs. Because if that soap was hurting his eye, he wouldn't be holding it open, as you can see. It, he's not squinting or anything. It's just uncomfortable, probably. Now, if this is a dog that has an eye infection, again, you would probably want to clean and have a new brush for the other eye. You don't want to cross-contaminate. Um, so you can turn around and show everyone Buster. This is his worst goopy eye. Um, and now you see, I'm just, I'm kind of more going away from the eye. I'm going I'm not scrubbing back and forth, okay, I'm just, I'm kind of, I'm trying to s gently scrape along on those, um, on that. Now, like, he's got a really hard buildup of this. These are tools that aren't necessarily all that bad to actually have on hand, even if you don't do stripping. Um, this is a three-in-one stripping knife, so it's got a fine side and a coarse side. And then these are carding tools, okay? This is merely a super fine um, Greyhound carding tool. Um, and you, I, I like this one, for instance. But you do need to be very, very gentle when you do this. So what I do this is I do is I grab it and I pick up on that hair. So I'm not scraping along the along the skin. So I'm more picking it up and scraping. As you can kind of see what I'm scraping off. I know that's not one duh. There you go. So that's just off of the eye that I scrubbed. And I'm gonna do this a couple of times. Um, again I'm I'm picking it up and I'm rolling it and scraping. Okay, I don't want to scrape along the skin, because like I said, that's wet tissue paper in there. So I want to try to keep it up off the skin, and as you guys can see, you can gently get a lot of the bigger, chunkier stuff off. in here.
Now, I never, ever would ever be recommending you bleach this um, just for the fear of getting it in their eyes. Um, those tear stains, I've never had any luck with them. So, it's... And again, I, I know my dog is fine. We don't have any eye problems. So I'm, I'm, I know, I'm going back and forth. But if this was a dog that had an eye infection, I would not be doing this. And it's just simple baby shampoo. I'm sure you can probably get away with using a, uh, what do you call it? A, a facial tearless shampoo or something like that. But that's all, we've got all the goops off of him. Um, and if I had gotten soap and that was irritating, his eye wouldn't be white. It would be really red colored. Um, and he wouldn't be holding his eyes open if there was soap in them. So this soap is totally fine. It's, again, we use it on our own human babies. So it's totally safe for these guys. And I'm only using it right there on the face. Um, just because it's gentle, it's mild, it's uh, non-abrasive just so that I can help loosen and scrub those off. Um, and I will come back and show you what it looks like when he's all dry, as this will look a whole lot better. back so Buster's all done and dry and um, although we hate the look of tear staining okay at 13 years old there's nothing I can really do for him um, we've done just about everything so you saw that I scrubbed with a toothbrush okay that was a really soft bristle toothbrush and for me to keep this maintained under control so that I'm not having to um, scrape or have, have any possibilities of, of injuring him later on in the future, I simply, I shave it out, okay? I shave it out with a 40, super, super gentle guys, um, even I still, I struggle, but I find if I use a 40 setting um, that I can at least get it a little bit cleaner. I usually will actually, before I got my Breveras, I would actually use a 40. Um, I had less likely to scratch where with the 10 blade, I was actually scratching more than I do with the 40. But I think because I'm so used to shaving poodles faces and beats and, and things like that all the time, that I'm a lot gentler with a 40 blade than I am with the 10 blade. So um, that's just me. But you guys use whatever you guys feel comfortable with. Don't think that just because I use this, this is what I'm saying you have to use. What I'm saying is, is use with caution. Um, so we'll actually pull this a little bit closer. Look, Buster, you're on TV. Let's go back. There we go. Okay. Stay. So, when I go to do his eyes, okay, I pull... I'm pretty much just going to shave this, this dark bit out angling for that camera for you guys. So I'm just going to shave this dark bit out. Um, I've got these set on a 40. Now I know that this probably is not going to be appeal to a lot of people as in style wise. Now this is my own personal dog so it really doesn't matter. Um, and it's not something that everyone's looking at and noticing. But you can see that right where it drains, okay, I shave it. And I, and I have shaved quite a bit lower. As you see, I didn't shave in between the nose. I'll do the same thing over here. And the reason why I do this is to try to keep the skin dry. Okay, when I, when you let it stay wet and moist, it's actually going to build up a real like callus, 
and sorry, and it tends to actually get a really bad um, uh, bumpy raise, kind of like if you had your fingers in like a wet band-aid. Okay, it becomes really soft and tender underneath that skin where you had the band-aid on, but the rest of your hand is dry. But because that band-aid's holding all that moisture in, it just gets really soft and tender. And a lot of times it will build up a, a, like a callus-like and it gets uh, really distorted and ugly looking. It, it stays red. As you can see, this looks really red in the video. Um, it's not that red in person. I think my camera is just enhancing all the colors pretty well. Um, but it's not as red as you think it is. And it doesn't really change too much of the shape because we didn't shave all of this underneath the eye. Okay, I still have pretty much a schnauzer face, but I keep all this hair that usually is always wet, I just take it off, okay? Um, for him at this point, it's more comfort rather than the vanity of it. Um, and then when I scissor, obviously this will be trimmed. Um, the bits right here around the eyes and things like that. There again, that's hard to shave around. I don't necessarily recommend trying to shave. Um, also, when you do shave, it really, really looks funny. Um, but again, you do what's better for the dog. Okay, so if it means that the dog's going to be better for it, then do it. Don't just because it doesn't look nice or clean or tidy. I wouldn't. Um, so. Just to sum it all up, this is this is how I take care of Buster's eyes, and I get rid of the goopies and things like that. Um, he's starting to tear back up again. That's what the, the darkness is looking. So I um, there there's nothing there's nothing. I've tried just about everything. Angel Eye doesn't do anything, but he's my boy, huh? My boy, yes. He chose me, I didn't choose him. So, quick story with Buster is, um, I groomed his parents, and then um, they were two separate clients at one time, and they both had white snouters. And all of a sudden, she's like, oh, I'm gonna breed Sophie with blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I have a snouter named that name. I can't even remember his name now. I told her not to, because again, they were white snouters, white on white. White isn't really even a color you want in snouters um, because of the health is issues and risks and things like that that you can have with them. And you can um, essentially just breed ticking time bombs that are basically ready to die at any minute. So she didn't listen to me. She did it anyways. She had seven puppies. I even groomed Buster for the first time at six weeks old, eight weeks old, before he was supposedly sold off to whoever. Well, all his brothers and sisters were sold. Two puppies were left, and one of the other groomers in the shop says, Oh, I'll take them. I'll find the other one a home. She took the girl, and one of the bathers there at the shop took Buster and paid money for him. Um, but every day she brought him to the shop, he would come and run and sit in my chair, right in the small of my back, he would sit right in the back of my chair. I couldn't sit back all the way in my chair because we had big office chairs is kind of what we had um, at this particular grooming salon. And we would, um, she did this for about a month. She brought this dog, she brought Buster to work and her mom hated the dog, didn't want the dog, wanted it to stay outside, she didn't own any other dogs, and we kind of said that wasn't very nice to put a young puppy outside um, unattended all day long, especially where we lived in, in California. There were hawks and eagles and things like that that would come and pick them up and take off with them. It's pretty known for having small dogs go missing um, or you see remnants of, of them in, in the backyard. It's not very pretty. So she's like, oh, well, I don't know who, what I'm going to do. One of the other groomers says, I know someone that will take them. It points to me because Buster's already sitting in my chair. He's sitting in my lap, basically. And never did I call this dog. I never encouraged it because when she would say, let's go, he would get up and go with her. Well, 
I told him, I said, oh, I, I'm not in a position to buy him. I can't pay money for him. And she said, that's okay. You can just have him. I know he'll go to a good home for you. And out of habit, that day she got up and says, come on, Buster, let's go. He wouldn't move. He didn't move at all. He simply, um, he simply stayed in my lap. And when I got up to go home, he left. And so it was like, he chose me. I didn't choose him. And Buster has been with me ever since. Um, one of the longest periods of times that we've ever been to part was when he was in quarantine um, and I was over here. It was about a year process. Um, so he didn't have me for about a year. And that was hard because I don't know who, was, who suffered more, him or I. Um, yes. Yes. I love you too, bud. But Buster's my butt buddy. He goes everywhere with me. He's always, always in the boom trailer with me. My clients all know who he is. Um, if he was to uh, not be in the trailer, they go, where's Buster? Because Buster will sometimes sneak out of the trailer. And because I set up and park um, in one spot, he runs around the trailer. And if it's to whatever he wants to go outside, he'll go sun himself out in the, out in the yard. He won't go anywhere. He's just so trustworthy. But I just love this dog. Huh. Yes. But yes, this is, this is Buster. This is my boy.